אני אעבור קצת בפן אחר, אני דווקא אדבר על הצד המובייל של כל הסיפור הזה, לדבר קצת על קידום אפליקציות. אני יודע שאנחנו כבר זורמים על עברית, אבל ברשותכם אני אעבור לאנגלית, כי זה יותר פשוט לי. אוקיי, אז כמו שאמרתי, אני יונתן, אני מ-Yellowhead, אנחנו חברת מרכזית 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 Search engine optimization, PPC, app store optimization, and uh, uh, all kinds of other things. Um, and what I want to talk to you about today is app store optimization. Working with all these publishers over the past uh, about two years, what we've kind of found is that no matter how big the publisher is, no matter how big the company is, everybody's still kind of lacking on the basics of ASO. We started working with these companies making small but smart changes and increasing daily organic installs anywhere from 50 to 300 percent for major applications. Uh, as the world of ASO has gone and gotten a little bit more complicated, uh, people are starting to talk about app indexation, deep linking, deferred deep linking. We're still finding that the majority of applications are doing a very, very poor job uh, at the basics. So uh, given that, I'll jump right in. Um, a few quick statistics. 63 percent of all users who find applications find applications through search. Uh, despite that, 83% of all, all applications are virtual, virtually invisible in search. This means that those applications cannot be found in keyword rankings and category rankings or in any other way. There are over 2 million applications today on Google Play and iOS, uh, and over 5,000 are added every single day. So given those kind of huge statistics, what do most publishers do? Most publishers go to advertising. They spend, you know, every few dollars they spend gets them another user. They go for PR agencies and you know, occasionally they'll get an article on TechCrunch or something like that which will get them another 10,000 users even. Uh, but all these publishers are kind of doing these things which help them today but don't help them tomorrow. Uh, with the exception of virality which nobody can really bank on, the kind of bedrock of successful applications is organic installs. The biggest applications today are getting the majority of their uh, installs from organic whether it's uh, you know, no matter what the vertical is. Um, and ASO is kind of the, the main channel that you can work on to increase those installs. So uh, I'm going to jump right in. What is ASO? Very basically speaking, it's SEO but for applications. It splits into search and conversion optimization. Search optimization is, let's say you're looking, for, uh, looking to get in shape. You might be searching for exercise, fitness, running, Nike, any of a thousand different things. Uh, and so search optimization refers to making sure that your application is actually present when people are looking for that. The other side of the coin is conversion optimization, which is when people find you, making sure that they actually want to download your application. The difference, one of the big differences between SEO and ASO is in ASO results are fast and results are big. Changes that we make uh, immediately increase, oops, there's a problem there. But uh, changes that we make immediately increase uh, keyword rankings, and that kind of overnight immediately increases downloads in those kind of percentages that we've talked about. Uh, as far as ranges, it varies a ton from application to application, but what we've tended to see is that uh, in English-speaking countries, it's anywhere from 10 to 100% increase in dailies, and in non-English-speaking countries, anywhere from 100 to 300%, and it's been as much as an even 800% increase in installs. Uh, what's kind of amazing about these statistics is that they hold true whether you're an application with 100 installs a day or if you're an application with 10,000 installs per day, uh, so things can get uh, pretty cool. Um, okay, from a very high level, this is the ASO process. Um, uh, to not bore you guys too much, I won't go into all of it, but basically speaking, we go through general research, understanding the industry, understanding competitors, then we go through keyword research, and then we work on search optimization and conversion optimization, which basically speaking is working on the text and working on the graphics. Uh, at Yellowhead, when we do this, we do this in 25 different languages, something uh, we call localization, which is also something that we'll get into uh, in the presentation. So uh, I'm going to skip over the research part. It's a big part of it, but uh, I want to keep it light for this, uh, for this presentation. Um, there's lots of things you can find online about it, and then uh, after you can feel free to talk to us, and we'll, we'll send you to all kinds of different resources. Um, when we're talking about search optimization, we're talking about the text that, uh, that makes sure that you're showing for different keywords. I'm going to talk about Google Play, and I'm going to talk about iOS. Together, those stores are about 80% of the app store markets. There are some other stores out there that are also uh, important. You know, the Amazon App Store has a little bit of hold in the market as well, but uh, the majority is in those two places. Basically speaking, uh, Google Play will look at an application's title, description, and short description for keywords, 
Uh, and iOS will look at, I'll go into all this in a second, or into titles and keywords. Uh, where that all kinds of com kind of comes from is from uh, those different stores' DNA. If you think about Google, Google comes from the world of search. It's intelligent, it knows how to find keywords, it knows how to find intent, it knows how to find all those things. If you look at iOS, where they come from is music. Uh, they come from people who are looking for the name of a song, they're looking for the name of an artist, maybe the name of an album, maybe genre, and that's about it. So the way that these app stores work are actually very, very different. So I'll start off uh, jumping right into titles. Titles are the most crucial place to put keywords if you have uh, for your application. Um, I'll go over a quick uh, results to show you this. This is the top six uh, apps for the keyword camera effects in Google Play. Uh, I'm gonna take a look at the number three application, Candy Camera. This is an application with over a four star rating, over a million reviews, it's frequently updated. Despite that, these two applications, which have less than four stars, one of them hasn't been updated in over a year and have significantly less reviews and hence most likely significantly less users, are outranking it and it's quite simply because they have that exact term in their title. Uh, another quick graph to show this, this is a keyword ranking for a, a uh, application that we worked with, quite simply moving the keyword from the keyword field to the title field uh, quickly creates a, a dramatic uh, increase in ranking. Um, Moving on from that, uh, we're going to move right into iOS keywords. iOS is a little bit interesting the way that it works with keywords. Again, iOS is a little bit more primitive than Google. You have your title and you have your keywords field. That being said, iOS knows how to mix and match. It knows how to mix keywords. So if you have the keyword uh, Tel and the keyword Aviv, you can be ranked for Tel Aviv. Uh, it also knows how to change keywords around. So if you have the keyword um, slot, you can also be found for the word slots. Um, so I'm going to look at this sample uh, application here, slots, wow casino games, Vegas slot machines, if you look up there, that's the title of our fake application, uh, and go over two keyword lists quickly. This is an example of a bad and not optimized keyword list. Uh, you get 100 characters in iOS, there's a keyword list that only uses 77, uses spaces between keywords, uh, which eats up more space, uses repetitive keywords, for example, there's slots in the title and slots in the, dis in the keyword list. This is something that we, uh, we see a lot of publishers have trouble with. You know, they say, this is my most important keyword, there's no way I can take it out. It's quite simply something that you don't need to do. Um, in addition, it has non-search relevant words. We worked with an application that has to do with dragons, and they sent us their keyword list and had things like fire and eggs and scales. And, you know, these are things that have to do with dragons, but nobody is looking for them. Um, in addition, it uses phrases. For example, it has the phrase daily bonus, which should be split into keywords. So you get the mix and match, you get all kinds of other things singulars and plurals, uh, and it also uses uh, some words that you get for free. If you're a free application, you can already be found for the word free. If you're a game, you can be found for the word game. Uh, briefly, this is something that looks a little bit better. It uh, has 99 characters, no spaces, uses the mix and match. For example, the first keyword is loss, and there's Vegas in the title, so they can be found for Las Vegas. Uh, they're targeting competitors. They're also using some nice tricks like hyphenated keywords. For example, you have free hyphen cell. Uh, if you use that in your iOS keywords list, you can be found for free sell, free sell, sell free, and any other uh, combination of those. Uh, okay, moving right along. So Google Play, uh, again, comes from search. This is uh, the description for a, uh, a trading application. Um, what Google will do, just like it'll do in uh, web, is it'll look at the number of words, it'll pull out the individual words, it'll look at keyword densities, uh, just like it does in SEO. That being said, Google is smart, it knows how to do synonyms, it knows how to do all kinds of mixes and variations and relevant words and all kinds of things like that. Um, one of the things that you can do, which is nice in Google Play though, is uh, because it scans your description and you're not really limited or not limited reasonably, uh, you can really go for long tails. You know, for, so for example, if you look at this trading application, they have all of the major currency pairs. These are the kinds of things that you just can't work on with uh, iOS. Okay, uh, moving ahead, I'm gonna get right uh, into conversion optimization, into optimizing graphics. Um, I'm gonna go through a few of the main screens. So the two screens that we deal with in App Store, optimi op App Store Optimization uh, is the search page and the actual App Store page. So here you have on the left what the search page looks like for uh, iOS for the term poker and on the right for an Android for the term keyboard. Uh, you can quickly see differences. In iOS you see you have an icon, you have two screenshots. Those screenshots take up a massive amount of the retail on the screen. Uh, when you're working on those screenshots, uh, those first two are really critical or if it's horizontal having one. Uh, in addition, if you're using a video, Having a, a cover photo for your video that you've actually designed for a screenshot, designed for this purpose, works very well. Um, 
And in addition, working on screenshots, uh, there's you know, kind of still a common misconception that a screenshot actually has to be a screenshot. You can add marketing messages, add calls to action, add uh, whatever else you want. Um, then on the right hand in the search screen of Android, you can see that it looks very different. What you get is you get uh, the reviews, you get the icon, and you get the title. Here, when we're talking about optimizing text, what's in, uh, optimizing graphics, what's important isn't necessarily just making it look good. Obviously, making it look good is important, but it's making it stand out compared to your competitors. Uh, Flexi does a nice job here. If you take a look at the icons, they're all square icons. Just having a simple circle immediately makes it stand out amongst its own competitors. Moving on to the actual App Store page. So, um, one of the interesting things that, uh, that has come up for uh, people who visit app stores, users basically split into two kinds of users. There are about, it's about a 50-50% split between what's called explorers and instant decision makers. Instant decision makers make it to your page, they see it, and after a couple of seconds they decide either to install the app or to abort the page, to ditch. Uh, explorers, on the other hand, will actually take the time to scroll through, look at your different screenshots, uh, read the first few lines of your description, that being said, uh, less than 1% of people actually uh, click read more on descriptions. Um, looking a little bit at the differences, again, you can see the difference for the instant decision makers. Again, in uh, iOS, those first two screenshots are critical. In Android, your feature graphic is critical. Uh, moving on to below the fold, you get descriptions, you get what's new, a kind of quick tip for anybody who has an application. Use your what's new section to have marketing text. People love it, people love keeping up with applications, seeing what's changing. Uh, and so a simple, we fixed bugs kind of doesn't cut it. Um, okay, moving on. So then uh, the last kind of big part of this, if we're talking about search optimization, uh, conversion optimization, the last big part is localization. Uh, localization, when we're talking about it, isn't actually changing the language of your application, it's changing the language of your app store page. One of the big comments we get right away from publishers is, oh, well, my application isn't in Spanish, so I don't really want to do that, or I really, you know, the US is what interests me. Uh, and I kind of can't emphasize how wrong that approach is. Uh, I'll say it for a few different reasons. First of all, I'll use uh, uh, an example. You know, if you think of uh, the average person living in Denmark, people in Denmark speak excellent, excellent English. Uh, they can use, you know, 99% of the applications that are out there, but when they're actually searching for an application, they might be searching for it in Danish. And so if you're not there, they're just not gonna find you. Um, the kind of only exceptions to this are if you're you know, an application that only works in Tel Aviv or if you're a Russian news application or something that's really ultra, 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 ultra specific. Uh, but again, localization is one of the places where we see huge, huge increases. Um, so when we're talking about localization, we're not talking about translation. We're not talking about, you know, obviously not Google Translate, but also not uh, nicer translation. We're talking about actually going doing keyword research and trying to find out what people are looking for in those languages. Just because you translate, translated uh, exercise to French, it might be a real word, it might make sense, but people there might not actually be looking for it. Uh, the way we kind of look at it, you know, we have a, an example, this is McDonald's in the Middle East with the Mikarabia, with the shawarma and all kind of stuff, and on the other hand, you have an example of translation, which doesn't work quite as well. Um, so a quick example for this, this is an application that we worked with called Logdog. Uh, they're an application on Google Play which detects uh, if another user has intruded into one of your accounts. Um, looking at their titles in English, it's Stop Hacker Intrusion. In German, it's Protection from Hackers. Uh, in Italian, it's Anti-Hacker Attacks. These things mean the same thing, but they're not exactly uh, the same message and they're built based on what people are looking for. Uh, you know, this is an application where we saw massive, massive increases in, in all of those different localities. Uh, another kind of interesting thing that we saw initially uh, in English, we changed their uh, title to Intrusion Detection System. Uh, when we did that, their rankings flew on all kinds of different things, but even though their rankings were rising significantly, their installs were kind of stagnant. Uh, later, we changed it to kind of a mix to Stop Hacker Intrusion, and we saw things start to rise a lot, despite the fact that uh, rankings hadn't changed. The reason that we figured this happened is because Stop Hacker Intrusion is a better uh, call to action than intrusion detection system, which especially when given an app, nobody really knows what that means. Um, okay, then uh, there's the localization of graphics. So with localization of graphics, you can do a few different things. Uh, you can either go for just swapping uh, the English text to the localized text, 
Or you can do what uh, 365 Scores has done, which is actually change the design of your application. This is something that works great. Um, localization is also an, an easy example to talk about when you're talking about sports. Uh, even in English, you know, if you have an application that's talking about soccer, soccer makes sense as a word anywhere, but if you're in the UK, they're talking about football. Uh, okay, then in the end, what it all comes down to, uh, this is, you know, a few kind of representative graphs of the changes that we see happen. Uh, this is an application we worked with in the US. We saw a 30% increase, and it's a little bit hard to see, but this is an application which already had a base of about 2,000 installs per day. Um, so, you know, in terms of ROI, it's a, a, almost an unmatched channel. Uh, below that, you have in Germany, where we saw a 200% increase. Uh, and, you know, this example, the reason that we like localization so much, this example is only for Germany, but now imagine you know, those same numbers multiplied again uh, across 20 uh, some countries. Uh, the kind of nice additional thing about App Store uh, optimization, the way it works, um, so uh, it doesn't work in a vacuum, it's a few things. Uh, keyword rankings are based on if you are optimized for those keywords, but they're also based on the strength of your application. The strength of your application has to do with how many installs you have, your ratings and reviews, all kinds of other stuff. Uh, but as you start to optimize an app, you go up in rankings, which gets you more installs, which in turn increases your rankings uh, further. So generally what we tend to see uh, is a spike, but then also a gradual increase over time after that. Um, something quick that I'll go over uh, in addition, there are dozens more uh, factors that go into ASO. Uh, again, you know, some of them to talk about installs, deposits can have an effect, ratings, reviews, uh, and really ratings and reviews is one of the ones that is, that is crucial. There was an application that we saw uh, my Vegas slots, they did something which we don't recommend, it's uh, a little manipulative. They started showing users a prompt, uh, telling them to give them a five-star rating. If users gave them a five-star rating, they would give them an extra 500 chips. And if users didn't give them a five-star rating, they would actually take away chips. Um, now, they can't do this, Apple doesn't actually give information about what uh, reviews users have left, but the effect of this, a little bit hard to see, but they went from about one positive rating and a few negatives every day to over 600 positive ratings per day. Uh, kind of overnight, their traffic spiked. You know, they were ranked ninth on poker, an unrelated term, all kinds of things. Uh, we weren't working with them, so I don't know exactly how many installs that led to, but working in similar situations, I can tell you it is a lot. Um, as far as how to improve rankings and reviews, there are a lot of different things you can do. You know, the kind of tried and true advice is build a good application, but there are all kinds of interesting things you can do on top of that. Uh, we work with a company called Apptentive that uh, have developed a system. Basically, what they do is they look for your engaged users, send those engaged users prompts, uh, and ask them if they like the application. And if they like the application, they'll send them to the review screen. And if they don't like the application, then they'll send them a feedback form. So, you know, essentially gating negative uh, reviews. Um, okay, um, beyond this, uh, we have a whole bunch of uh, kind of ASO hacks and iOS in Google Play, which I won't go over now because it's, uh, both technical and uh, and will get a little bit long, but uh, feel free to talk to us and I can uh, send any of this on to you. There's also a list of tools you can use uh, if you're in that world. Again, just talk to me and I'll send you that occasion. Um, so, uh, in summary, uh, the very first thing is do ASO. Uh, this is something that uh, publishers across the world are still not doing and it's just uh, a waste. You know, one of the frequently asked questions we also get is, you know, I see that uh, Instagram isn't really doing App Store optimization, or Snapchat isn't doing it, so, so why should I? Uh, the bottom line is, first of all, these are applications that are doing fine on their own, uh, but second of all, they're just leaving potential on the table. Um, there is, you know, if you look through your, uh, if you look through iOS, or if you look through Google Play for uh, camera, for text messaging, for all these things, you'll see that Instagram and Snapchat just don't show up, or they show up, but they're at the bottom of the list. Second of all, localize. Again, unless you're one of those rare exceptions, you know, the world is a huge world today. The US is only a tiny part of it, especially in the world of applications, uh, and it's something that's worth doing. Third, constantly pay attention. Uh, over time, this is what uh, makes or breaks an application. Um, you know, all the other channels that, uh, that have been talked about today that are talked about otherwise, are, you know, they're crucial, they're part of it, um, but, but they will lack in the long run without this. And kind of on the flip side of that, uh, the last part is ASO is critical, but it's not the only part of the equation. And we talked about those percentages, the way that increases, the fact that it's based on uh, how many installs you already have. So you can't have an application with 10 installs per day and expect to do ASO and get to 10,000 per day. It has to come in conjunction with all of those other channels. Um, thank you. Questions?
what do you mean by desktop downloads? Uh, you can actually download, download an application, application to your uh, yeah. desktop to and your then sync it. Right. So, um, uh, you know, what we found is it has an effect uh, on rankings in terms of installs, in terms of it counts as another install. Um, you know, overall, generally speaking, that funnel is very, very difficult. We haven't found that, you know, it happens in the other channels we work with as well. Uh, we found that it's just generally not a great funnel. Not many users are downloading applications on their desktop. It's not common. Yeah. Um, so it's uh, truthfully not something that we, that we look into too much. You have some No, I don't. I don't. Anything else? What's your email? Uh, I, have, I have business, it's Jonathan at Yellowhead Inc, but I have uh, business cards that I can add them all at. But I will add that to the presentation. <laughs> Jonathan, a question. Sure. Uh, do you work with users after they download the application? I mean, with the user engagement, with the in-app purchases? Uh, no, we don't. We're a performance marketing agency, so we're really, you know, up to the acquisition part of everything. We work with a lot of companies that do. You know, one of the companies that we talk to a lot is Apptentive, but no, we don't. Thank you. Um, so thank you everyone. Uh, we're done with the presentation part and you're free to hang out and uh, enjoy the beer, the snacks, um, and uh, keep in touch through the meetup. Thank you. Lina, can I see one thing? Yes, yes, of course. Okay. Okay, okay. Uh.